Well, Nick Norowitz, great to connect with you here. Big fan of your work. You got some great, great stuff going on with your YouTube channel. And um, obviously, you, you first popped up on my radar with your study in the Journal of Metabolites. And, um, you know, it was obviously a, a captivating, captivating title there. Um, all of us, pretty much everybody that's listening to this podcast, I mean, they, they know Oreo cookies junk food, right? And so you see Oreo cookie treatment lowers LDL cholesterol more than high intensity statin therapy. And of course, they, they don't even understand the, the next, the rest of it, which me, which you go into in a lean mass hyper responder on a ketogenic diet. But just the idea that Oreo cookie treatment actually lowered LDL cholesterol with somebody with elevated LDL cholesterol, which we're told is, you know, a terrible thing, right? And that's, that is, we're told that high LDL cholesterol is a really strong independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. You were able to lower it with Oreo cookies in, in, le in two weeks, basically 16 days, eating 12 a day. So um, that was, that obviously caught my attention, re read the study and some really remarkable things, just some, so the, the, just understanding LDL cholesterol. This is, this is what's so key. And what I learned was um, that we have to really rethink how we analyze LDL. And so I'd love for you to go into, you know, your, basically your, your motivation for running this study, um, I, you know, your hypothesis and then what you learned through it. And basically, um, you know, what, what you want to present to the lay public as a result of this study. Yeah. Let me first provide a little bit of framing. Um, every time I speak about this, I try to frame it a little bit differently, see what resonates. So I'm going to start off by talking in a very boring fashion, but with a purpose. You know, when I was, I've always been a super nerd and I've always been entrenched in like Jade Tower academia. So um, the kind of thing that me and my friends would talk about over dinner, which would get us excited, would be like, oh, have you seen this new study in nature about like the bile acid TUDCA and how it affects like or is affected by BH, BSH enzyme expression of the gut and the effects on blah, 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 right? A lot of jargon, the kind of thing that if you observed two people talking about this, you'd be completely lost and you'd be like, why are they so excited? This sounds like complete jargon gibberish. But, you know, as time went on, I started to study this lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, which is which is named in the title. And I was shocked and awed, shocked and awed by um, just how interesting this was from a physiological level. As somebody who, you know, loves to study metabolism, physiology, this phenotype to me was the equivalent of a lay person seeing an eight foot tall person walk into a room followed by like 12 more eight feet tall people. They're like, whoa, wait, this is unusual. There's something unique about this population. Mm -hmm. And by understanding what's unique, we can potentially uncover a lot that's interesting about physiology in general. So that's where I was at. And me and colleagues, we had a stream of papers coming out that I think were not only interesting from a scientific perspective or should have been interesting to the scientific community, but with profound potential implications on understanding of lipid dynamics in humans, therefore possibly broader applications to the general public since cardiovascular disease is a leading killer, remains a leading killer, despite innovations in LDL lowering, apple B lowering pharmacotherapy. So we need better physiological understanding. And there's a lot of questions about cardiovascular disease that still exist. And what we have in this phenotype, which I'll explain, is an incredible natural experiment to, you know, that is an opportunity, a gift really to science and medicine to better understand lipidology, physiology, and cardiovascular disease. So I'm caught in this position of wanting to beat the drum over what I think is the importance of studying rigorously this phenotype, which we will describe in a minute. But I'm not, you know, a, a established researcher with multi-million dollar grants and resources. I'm a young PhD and a medical student. And so I was in this position where I was like, all right, this discussion that I think really needs to happen is not happening. What tools do I have at my disposal? Do something maybe a little bit creative and force a discussion that is being, we can go into this if, if you want to go into this, but I'm going to use the word silence, which is a word with a lot of weight. And I use that weight intentionally because I think a lot of the discussion around this topic has been suppressed inappropriately, including in the peer reviewed literature. And I can substantiate that with examples. Bottom line, here's where I was. And I envisioned this concept of, can I translate this? Can I do a metabolic demonstration that translates the shock and awe I feel to your average person? And so I envisioned Oreo versus statin, which took advantage of the physiology we understand 
and made a prediction based on our model that in a particular context, a particular metabolic context, carbohydrate addition, including any carbs, so quote, unhealthy carbs like Oreos, should lower, quote, bad cholesterol. And so what I decided to do is a, a crossover study on myself where I announced before even doing the study that I was going to do this study and my predictions. It was an a priori announcement. And the study was designed that I would eat a baseline ketogenic diet, my relatively standard diet, lock that in for a couple of weeks, be getting weekly lipid tests, which my primary care physician, she was ordering, was going right into my electronic medical record in Epic. And then I would do an intervention with Oreo cookies, where I just added Oreo cookies to my diet, a sleeve per day, so 12 cookies, which is about 100 grams of carbs, then have a washout period, and then do six weeks of high dose uh, statin therapy, um, in particular Crestor or uh, Resuvastatin at 20 milligrams, which is a pretty uh, Herculean dose. Um, it's it's a high dose, high intensity statin. And my prediction was the Oreos would have a similar or possibly greater impact than the statin based on my understanding of the physiology in this context. Now, that is a bold claim to predict Oreo cookies were lower cholesterol. But based on the research that we have, including other case series and an interventional trial and a meta-analysis of randomized control trials, I thought this would work. And because I know how to dot my I's and cross my T's, not only did I get my PCP on board, I got a highly esteemed lipidologist, William Cromwell, who trained Thomas Dayspring, who trained Peter Atia in lipids, to co-author as senior author this paper, and of course got my appropriate IRB exemption from uh, the medical school, Harvard Medical School. I executed on the study, and lo and behold, the results showed that the Oreos lowered my cholesterol, my LDL cholesterol, the quote, bad cholesterol, twofold um, as much as the statin, and in one third the time. So that's the headline. And I intended it to be provocative in order to invite people to go, whoa, what's going on here? I want to learn more. Once you get past the barrier of, okay, maybe this person isn't trolling me, maybe there's something legitimate here. Yeah, absolutely. And so you saw this big drop, two weeks of taking basically 100 grams of carbs. You could have done it with anything. You could have done it with eating apples, right? With sweet potatoes, right? Whatever healthy carb that you wanted. But of course, the Oreos provided the provocative title. And, yeah. you know, everybody, um, you know, no matter where you're at in the nutrition world, everybody agrees Oreos, not a healthy food, right? And everybody knows them, right? It's a household, it's a household name. Yeah. I mean, people ask me why Oreos? And why not a healthy carb? That's a question I get all the yeah. time. And I'm like, well, actually, we've done this with the quote healthy carbs, the fruits and the starches. We have a 2021 paper and a 2023 paper. Guess what? You don't know about them. Why <laughs> is that? Because it's not provocative enough. So my goal was to think, what is the most provocative food, carb food that this could work for? And I could not think of anything that's better branded as a typically unhealthy food that everybody knows than Oreo cookies, which is exactly why I chose Oreo cookies. Yeah, absolutely. So when he started the study, uh, you were getting your LDL tested. And mm -hmm. what was it in the beginning? And then how much, you know, I know the Oreos dropped at 71%. What was, yeah. what was that drop? What did that look like? Um, the uh, start LDL was 384 milligrams per deciliter, which yeah. is astronomically high. Um, yeah. To be clear, on a mixed diet, my LDL, even on like a standard American diet, my LDL runs in the 90s. Like congenitally, I have totally normal LDL. I don't have FH. When I carbohydrate restrict, my LDL goes up based on our understanding of this physiology, which we can dig into it a little bit, but just yeah. to give a little bit of background, basically, if you're very lean and insulin sensitive, when you restrict carbohydrates, you have this massive shift towards fat fuel trafficking. And that can present as this lipid signature with very high LDL, very high HDL and low triglycerides. And that triad is what we name lean mass hyper responder. And the lean mass part doesn't come from any criteria for BMI. There's no BMI or leanness criteria. Mm -hmm. It comes from the observation that this presents in lean people, lean insulin sensitive people, which we've actually shown in a meta-analysis of randomized control trials. So if you take all the low carb randomized control trials and you kind of stratify them by WHO BMI criteria, the only group with increases in LDL are the lean group with BMI under 25. You have overweight or class one obesity, no increase in LDL. You have class two obesity, typically you'll see a decrease in LDL. So again, it's one of these very interesting phenomena where we're trying to understand the, sorry to use jargony terms, but the heterogeneity, the causes of like huge variations in cholesterol change that appear to be kind of a boogeyman for low carb. And we're seeing this oddity where, oh, 
it's not the people with metabolic syndrome, diabetes, diabetes and obesity that are having the, quote, unhealthy response. It's the lean insulin sensitive mm-hmm. people that are having these crazy spikes in LDL. But basically, if you add that carbs to the system, then you can shift your metabolism towards more carb burning. And so the lipid trafficking system that results in this profile, including the high, quote, bad cholesterol, um, basically the flywheel can stop spinning which is why any carb should work. And in me, a pure Oreo addition should work. Now, that wasn't a swap. I didn't cut out fat. In fact, I right. added fat and saturated fat because there's that in the Oreo. Extra cream. calories in general. Yeah. Yep. I was slightly hypercaloric, you could say. Um, I had added fat as well. Technically, I had added fiber as well. Um, yeah. But the addition of the carb was sufficient to drop my LDL from 384 to 111, which is a 71% drop in 16 days. Now, the reason it was 16 days and uh, not 14, because I had said initially I was going to do two weeks, is we were getting weekly tests, right? So the two-week mark was supposed to be the end of that phase. But the drop was so huge that we're like, eh. I talked to my my primary care physician. We're like, we probably should repeat this tomorrow and the next day to do like a triplicate. Just yeah. to show, look, this isn't a fluke. Like, this is a bona fide finding. So we did it on days 14 and then 15 and then 16 kind of as a triplicate. And actually... The LDL was still dropping. It was still downtrending wow. mm-hmm. uh, wow. at 16 days. It might have dropped lower, but by that point, I was so done with that phase that I'm like, all right, the point's been demonstrated. Let's wash out and let's go on to the statin. And to be clear, the statin had the exact effect size you would expect, a 32.5% drop. So it's not like the statin didn't work. It's just that the Oreo cookies were much more potent. Yeah, yeah. And in the standard cardiology model, where they don't really, the standard model doesn't really understand this lean mass hyperresponder uh, physiology. And so they would look at that and they would say, that's a great drop. And they would start to try to study what is in the Oreos. Is it the chocolate? Is it the seed oils? Is it, you know, is it the artificial sweeteners? Is it the sugar? Right. So they would try to study it and try to understand, okay, somehow Oreos are lowering this. Um, and that's a good response, even though you were hypercaloric and Mm -hmm. most likely if you were testing your insulin, your insulin probably would have been up. I'm sure it would have been up and probably your inflammatory markers would have been up, but they still probably would have said because they put so much of an emphasis on Mm -hmm. total LDL particles as an independent risk factor, Mm -hmm. they probably would have said, you know what, it's worth it because it dropped that cholesterol so much. Right. Well, that gets to, I think, one of the or the core provocative nature of the study that goes beyond what I'm saying, which is you hear this title that has, you know, gives the impression based on the data that occurred, Oreo cookies lower LDL cholesterol more than statin therapy in this particular context. And what people immediately jump to, and I I knew this would be the case, so I I won't say I didn't invite it, but people need a value judgment, or a lot of people need a value judgment. They're uncomfortable sitting with um, cognitive dissonance. And so what you have here, because I chose Oreo cookies, is, okay, you're overeating processed sugary carbs that can't be healthy <laughs> we just know like we can agree generally yeah. this is not a healthy intervention but the response is presumed to be profoundly healthy if we assume the drop in ldl is a good thing so you're left with this tension in your mind where you have bad intervention good outcome and i intentionally leave it there that's all this is supposed to do because You can layer over that some sort of interpretation, something like, and to be clear, I'm not saying any of this, but things like, oh, this means LDL is not bad, or this means statins are bad. None of this is said in the study, nor would I ever make these claims. And it's clear it's a metabolic demonstration, but it provokes this feeling of discomfort that forces people to try to either layer on a value judgment or do what I think is the scientific thing and say, whoa, this is interesting. What do we need to do next to learn more? Which is really the, you know, the reaction I was trying to provoke. And as for the superficial reactions, because it can kind of go either way, you know, I'll be clear. This was something I thought about a long time before doing with respect to the impacts. Um, I think the danger of it is if people have superficial, uh, let's say, interpretations, could it lead potentially to people making quote, maladaptive choices with respect to managing their own cardiovascular risk. What I decided was I really didn't think anybody would be swayed, any reasonable 
or just really any adult will be swayed to think, oh, Oreo cookies are healthy, therefore I'm going to binge Oreos, or that this would convince anybody something like, you know, LDL is not a problem. First of all, I never say that. There are going to be people that make that statement off of it, but then I think that's more confirmation bias. So I contemplated what the reaction might be, and I thought overall the net reaction will be positive. And doing an audit of the feedback, I think that's been the case. We have acquired more research um, partners and resources to further study this interesting phenomenon. Again, we can get into the weeds of what that is. But on the clinical end, it's very interesting. In the months that have followed the Oreo versus statin study, it's now been, what, like five-ish months, six-ish months, I've gotten contacted by quite a lot of physicians, including cardiologists, who reach out, who say something to the effect of, I saw this. And it provoked me to actually go down the rabbit hole with respect to this area of the literature. And I was really taken by this interesting phenomenon. And guess what? By understanding the physiology, the lipid energy model behind the lean mass hyperresponders, I actually now have a way to manage my lean mass hyperresponder patients with an option that is not medication. So they might have patients who are medication intolerant. And who are concerned about their high LDL and like, well, they don't need ketogenic diets therapeutically. And now we understand the levers they can pull to manipulate their LDL. So now I have patients, say, on sweet potatoes or banana therapy, and they're having better results than they did with statins. And they're happy. And I feel more comfortable, even if we're sitting in an unknown with respect to what the risk is. We now have tools based on the physiology to apply a clinically cautious approach while the research evolves as it should. So if anything, I think conventionalists should be heartened by the fact that this provides additional tools for patients and uh, physicians and patient-physician teams based on understanding of the physiology and this phenotype. 